simple notion, everything we're doing really does touch every piece of campus in a way that very little things do. So uh, just wanted to acknowledge that up front. I wanna thank everyone for what you're doing. Uh, you're here today because you're interested in sustainability. You're interested in furthering our efforts. You may be on our president's advisory committee. Uh, you may be you know, someone who's intimately involved with helping us with our STARS report. Just wanted to say thank you. And with that, uh, turn it back over to Kelly. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Strasser. Again, I'm Kelly Wellman, and I am very pleased to welcome you to the Texas A&M University 2021 Virtual Sustainability Awards event. I'm also joined today by my colleagues, uh, Ben Kelsher and Jesse Carswell. And we'd like to extend a really warm welcome to the attendees and thank you to family and friends who are actually here watching in support of our award recipients. So regarding a few Zoom logistics, I know it's been a year in this kind of setting, but let's just go over a couple of those. I have turned on live transcript. So you have the ability to disable this feature if you don't want to see that. And you can do it by finding the CC closed caption icon. It's on your toolbar. And you can select the carrot. So depending on where your toolbar is, it's either at the top or the bottom. So that carrot will be pointing either up or down. And you can select to hide the transcript. And if it isn't already, I would encourage you to select the side-by-side -side mode also found in your toolbar under the viewing um, uh, section. And that will allow you to have the optimal screen experience today where our videos aren't interfering with what, whatever slide is uh, showing on your screen. So in our time together this morning, we're briefly going to discuss Texas A&M's path to a sustainable future. We wanna review a few of the university's sustainability performance and share some highlights with you. We will definitely be acknowledging our campus leaders and champions, the main event for today. And we're gonna close by sharing how each of you can participate at the individual level. And so before we get started, I would like to take a moment and acknowledge the entire campus community for the variety of ways we've come together to actually sustain Texas A&M during the COVID-19 pandemic. The past year has been a true test of resilience for our campus family and it has taken everyone working together in so many countless ways to persevere so that we could provide the highest quality undergraduate and graduate programs while developing new understandings through research and creativity. This strength that the campus has displayed during the pandemic is the exact same strength that can advance Texas A&M University in a shifting global landscape that increasingly needs thought leaders and change agents to address the grand challenges of our time. And as a pathway to our own sustainable future, the university released an updated sustainability master plan in 2018. And this provides direction to the campus over the next 20 years. The plan was created with over 500 different community members coming together, students, faculty, and staff um, to generate um, our path. And the framework itself that's in the plan uh, was used with, was created with various lenses. The first of those being a holistic quilted approach that recognizes and values the interconnectedness of economic, environmental, and social sustainability. The second lens that our, our plan uses is STARS, the Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating System. And Ben is going to cover that in a little bit more depth shortly. The final lens is the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And if you haven't heard of these, the UN SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals, there are 17. These global goals uh, are helped to lead to a healthy and prosperous planet. And this is really a blueprint to achieve a better and most, more sustainable future for all inhabitants of the earth. It is worth noting that the SDGs place an emphasis on the role that high income countries have to aid in accomplishing these 17 goals. And as an institution of higher education, Texas A&M plays a natural leadership role in this arena through our institutional objectives. I'd encourage you to learn more about the UN Sustainable Development Goals by visiting sdgs.un.org forward slash goals. And so our actual sustainability master plan aligns these three frameworks of holistic sustainability, STARS, and the SDGs across four key areas. And that, there are nine prevailing themes in the plan. The first of those being the physical environment. And the physical environment includes energy use and greenhouse gas emissions, campus mobility, what we do with stormwater management, and of course the built environment and site design. And um, if that's kind of not your language, we're talking about how we plan for the future, uh, for how the campus will grow and develop what it looks like. 
The second big area is the institutional effort, and this includes administrative support, education, outreach, and engagement, instruction, research, and innovation. The third major area of the plan is social sustainability, with the final encompassing all the areas of waste management. Texas A&M University's plan has 16 evergreen goals that um, Jerry had alluded to at the beginning. And there are within these 16 evergreen goals, 47 targets and 162 actions. Um, the idea is that we advance ourselves as an institution by accomplishing the goals and objectives set out in the plan. And this is actually, you know, if you don't have time to read the 110 page document, you can view the whole plan at sustainability.tamu.edu. What I'm showing you here is just a snapshot. It's at the very back, just a few pages. It's a plan at a glance. And in here, I know that your screen's probably a little bit small, but you can see our targets, our actions, and then all the key players it takes to accomplish that. And this is the plan that we are using to advance the campus. And um, I would, again, encourage you to go and take a look and familiarize yourself with what we as an institution have committed to. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Ben, who's gonna discuss our assessment program, STARS, which provides the important baseline for how we understand our campus sustainability efforts. All right, great. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, it was great learning more about the sustainability master plan. Uh, so what we're going to learn about right now is STARS. STARS is the uh, sustainability tracking assessment and rating system. It's a program from ASHI, the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. And basically what you saw um, is, uh, you know, really the whole point of uh, sustainability, how we make it happen on campus is through partnerships. Um, you know, our office is small. So we really rely on all, all people through different departments on campus. We work with over 30 different uh, stakeholders to gather information for our STARS report. Um, so what you basically have seen is the sustainability master plan is something that we've created internally as a university to have a road a roadmap towards a sustainable future. And what STARS is, is something that's created by ASHI. It's the largest sustainability organization in North America, and they're also uh, worldwide. It's basically a blueprint. It's a series of credits that lets you know these are the things that your university needs to do to be sustainable. And some advantages of STARS is that it's fully transparent. Everything that is in our STARS report, you can go online and you can see it right now today. Also, we have full control over our STARS report. So like I said, we work with over 30 different stakeholders to gather data and they enter in our sustainability information into this, into this online portal. Um, and that means there's not an outside entity looking in, you know, trying to make determinations. We have full control over how we report our sustainability data. And it's also very useful for peer comparisons. You know, we always want to see how we're competing against um, the schools that we compare ourselves to academically or athletically. And STARS allows us to do that. So STARS works as a rating system. You're able to get uh, points for all of the credits that, you're, that you accrue throughout the report. Uh, so the way that the rating system works is, if you go to the next slide, please, Kelly. So the rating system scores you if you if you're able to achieve 25 points up to 25 points, you're able you're able to get a stars uh, bronze. If you're able to go up to 45 points, you're able to get stars silver. If you get 65 points, you're able to get stars gold. And if you hit 85 points, you're able to hit stars platinum. And you can also file as a reporter. And this is for schools that maybe don't have the financial means um, to afford the stars tool. Um, but it's, it's a very inclusive tool and all schools are able to use this and get a baseline understanding of their STARS uh, reporting. So thinking about the rating, it's important to see where has Texas A&M been in the past, where are we at in the future? Our first STARS report, we released it in 2012. Our goal at the time was STARS Silver. You can see we were able to hit that goal right above 45 points. So we were very satisfied with that. And STARS is something where your rating is good for every three years. So our next report was due in 2015. And you can see we went up again. We were from 47 to almost 55 points. And we were definitely proud of that accomplishment. But we had a realization, STARS could be more effective if we use it for continuous improvement. So what we thought was we need to start filing our STARS report annually. Every three years is easy to forget about. Annually is something that will continually be in the forefront of our minds, our stakeholders' minds, continue to push us forward. And what we decided is we wanted to set a goal we wanted to be stars gold by 2018. Um, so our annual submission started. Our first one was uh, 2016. What did we hit in 2016? Look at that. We got all the way to stars gold in just one year. And that's what happens when you start actively managing something. 
Um, so we filed it again in 2017, and you can see we went up um, a little bit more. We filed it again in 2018. We had a nice jump from about 68 points to um, a little over 71 points. And you can see here, we're doing really well in our performance. We've kind of maximized our stars points um, currently. And what we saw for the first time in 2019 is we saw a slight drop. We went from 71.21 to 70.15. Um, and then we filed our, our report again in 2020. So this is our current uh, report, our current rating. And again, we had a, another slight drop from 70 to about 60, about 69 points. So we're never satisfied with dropping. You know, we definitely want to continue to move forward. But I would like you to look at the overall trend line and see where we started in 2012 to where we're at now in 2020. Overall, it's very positive. Um, ultimately, we want to be stars gold. Uh, the rating of uh, bronze, silver, gold, platinum is more important than the actual point total. Um, but that, with that said, we're not satisfied with our point uh, drop, our score dropping. So we definitely want to improve. And in 2021, we want to hit a goal of 75 points. That's what we're trying to get to in 2021. Um, but ultimately, being stars gold is very positive, and that's uh, thanks to the efforts of a lot of different folks on campus. So, I just want to thank you for all of the work that you do to help us achieve stars gold every year. And now you're seeing our performance individually. How do we compare amongst our peers? So, Vision 2020 are our peer institutions we compare ourselves to academically. And you can see here we are solidly in the middle of this group. Um, most of the Vision 2020 peers are stars gold, you know, so we're doing really well to maintain our stars gold rating. Uh, you know, one of the schools we really like to try to beat in, um, you know, all things is uh, UT, and you can see we are doing better than UT still, so it's still a little feather in our cap. Uh, but I have to warn you, they're catching up. Their latest report, they're getting closer to us, so we got to keep on pushing forward. You know, we hit that 75 goal, we'd be in third place among our Vision 2020 peers, and we want to just keep going forward. And then thinking about athletics, how do we do amongst the SEC? So we're starting to get a lot better on the football field, and we're doing really well um, uh, in terms of our sustainability performance. We're currently in second place. You could see that our score, we were in the past, we're actually in first place. So we definitely need to reclaim that number one spot from the University of Missouri. Um, and if we hit that goal for 2021, we'll be able to do that. But uh, again, number two in the SEC is doing really well in terms of sustainability. So we're definitely... Um, helping lead our SEC conference in terms of sustainability. And now you've, you've seen our performance, you've heard a little bit about it, but let's start to put it in context. Let's actually see what are some of the highlights, what are the, some of the sustainability highlights that have happened at Texas A&M over the past year. And now we have a cool video. And before I play this video, I also wanted to just shout out our graphic designer, a uh, graduate assistant, Mamoun Masood. He's been with us for a number of years. All of the graphics that you see in this report, our sustainability highlights report, this video, he has uh, helped us create these. Um, so it would be really hard for us to have this really fancy event without him. So just thank you, Mamoon, and check out his work um, right here with this video.
All right. Hopefully you enjoyed that video as much as I did. It's always uh, really cool to see all of the work that has happened over the last year just laid out, you know, in a really quick two minute video. Um, and now what we're going to move into is uh, the recognition portion of our event. So sustainability at Texas a and you know, it would definitely not be able to happen if it was just Jesse Kelly and myself. It takes the entire campus uh, to, to, you know, achieve sustainability goals for Texas A&M. And um, what we really want to do right now is just recognize all of the, you know, first, we recognize um, that we're making changes happening on campus. Uh, I guess what I should have said first is our theme that we're working towards uh, with this virtual Earth Month that we're having for these next two weeks is creating change through the sustainable development goals. But creating change is really what I want you to think about. And you saw we have a sustainability master plan. You saw we use the STARS, um, the STARS uh, portal, the STARS tool to uh, create institutional change on campus. So that's something that has to happen first is institutional change. And I guess before I should go, I should back up to the sustainable development goals themselves. We're looking at kind of national global change. And then we have to bring that down, you know, to the national level. We have to bring that down to the institutional level, Texas A&M. But we keep on going, creating change. It happens in so many different ways. And we have departments. And departments on campus really help us uh, create uh, our change. And it's not just the departments. It's also the individuals that work in those offices. So thinking about how change happens, you know, has to happen institutionally, has to happen department level, and also individually on our campus. So thinking about that, we want to recognize all of the departments and the folks that have helped us achieve sustainability over the years at Texas A&M. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is uh, STAR, STARS and the folks that really helped us with STARS. And we have something we call the STARS 100, and we also have something we call the STARS Exemplary Credits. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to be giving away door markers um, to the, and you can see those on the screen, is door markers to recognize achievements in STARS. So if you are part of the STARS 100, that means that you earned 100% of the points available in a credit that you were assigned. Um, so what I want to do right now is recognize those folks that are our STARS 2020, our STARS 100 2020 recipients. So we'll kick that off on the next slide here. So uh, for sustainability literacy and assessment and assessing sustainability culture, we have Dong Ling Zan with the Office of Institutional Effectiveness and Evaluation and also the Office of Sustainability. For campus as a living lab, we have Utilities and Energy Services, Chartwells, SSC Grounds, Transportation Services, Howdy Farm, Winnie Carter Wildlife Center, and also the Office of Sustainability. For support for research and open access to research, we have Michael Maciel with the University Libraries, also our office. And for student life, outreach materials and publications, and the outreach campaign, we have Carol Binzer, Christiana Bowles, and Brandon Carlson with Residence Life, and also our office. For employee orientation and the wellness program, we have Nancy DeLeon, Wes Wynn, and Elizabeth Swartz with Human Resources and Organizational Effectiveness. With, uh, for community partnerships, uh, Jamie Masterson with Texas Target Communities. For assessing diversity and equity and support for underrepresented groups, we have Jennifer Reyes with the Office for Diversity. For sustainable dining, we have Stephanie Denson with Chartwells. For biodiversity, we have Jeff Truss and Tassie Herman with Environmental Health and Safety. And for hazardous waste management, again, Jeff Trust and Tassie Herman with environmental health and safety, and also Andy Mitchell with logistics. And we have water use, Nathan Jones with utilities and energy services. And uh, now this next portion is the, is the exemplary credits. And this is basically extra credit um, for our star score. Uh, so these are very valuable credits. They add on top of whatever our rating is. So we wanna recognize and we're able to you know, go above and beyond what stars looks for. Um, so the first exemplary credit that we're going to be looking at today is diversity and equity recognition, and that is uh, Jennifer Reyes with the Office for Diversity. And next we have the Dining Services Certification and the Fair Trade Campus, and that's Stephanie Denson with Chartwells. And for Green Athletics, uh, Rebecca Parkhill and Scott Obergefell with Athletics. And for uh, ground certification, Barbara Musgrove and Philip Zellner with SSC Grounds. 
And uh, finally, we have stormwater modeling. Um, that's Tassie Herman with Environmental Health and Safety, who helped us achieve that. So that is our STARS 100 and our uh, STARS Exemplary Credit winners. So congratulations to all of you. And again, just thank you so much for your efforts. Um, without without y'all continuing to achieve 100% of your points and helping us get those extra credit opportunities, you know, there's no way we'd be able to be STARS gold. Uh, so your efforts are really important. Um, we want to continue to, um, you know, try to maintain 100% of those points. And hopefully we can get a few more of our stakeholders to join the ranks of the STARS 100 for next year as we continue to push forward towards our goal of 75. Um, so that's the STARS 100 and STARS exemplary credit winners. And now we want to look at um, some larger STARS awards. So these are our sustainability STARS award. And we're going to be recognizing performance in the sustainability tracking assessment and rating system. And what we're going to do is recognize the stakeholders who helped us compile the data that we needed um, to enter this data and also the departments that we represent. So again, thinking about how do the departments create change and then the individuals that are doing the, doing the actual work on the ground. Um, so the first award that we have is the STARS Most Improved Award. It's awarded to the department, which compared to their most recent um, STARS submission, made the greatest improvement in the, the points they earned in a respective STARS credit. And for the first time, uh, the 2020 STARS Most Improved Award is a tie. And the first winner is Utilities and Energy Services uh, for their improvement in um, credit OP5, Building Energy Efficiency. And this is special thanks to Mr. Les Williams and Dr. Yasuko Sakurai um, for their work as STARS liaisons for Utilities and Energy Services. So the second STARS 2020 Most Improved Award goes to Transportation Services. Uh, they, they had this for their credit for um, improving an OP16 commute modal split. And special thanks to Mr. Ron Steedley for his uh, service as a STARS liaison. And now we have the overall uh, top performer award. It's awarded to the department that has multiple credits and who achieved the highest cumulative point total from those respective credits. And this year we have three uh, departments who have won this award. And the first 2020 overall top performer award goes to the university libraries. Uh, they earned 100% of their available points in the STARS credit. Um, and this is special thanks uh, to Mr. Michael Maciel for his work as the uh, STARS liaison. And now the second STARS 2020 overall top performer award goes to the Office for Diversity. They earned 100% of their uh, available points and their credits. And this is special thanks to Dr. Jennifer Reyes. Um, she served as a STARS liaison for the Office for Diversity. So thank you for that. And the third um, STARS 2020 overall top performer award goes to Residence Life. Uh, they also earned 100% of their available STARS points. And this is special thanks um, to Dr. Carol Binzer, Ms. Christiana Bowles, and Mr. Brandon Carlson um, for their work as STARS liaisons with Res Life. And you can see we have a nice picture of them with their award. So congratulations. And now our final STARS Award um, of the morning is the uh, AISHI Top Performer Award. This is an official designation by the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. And they make this for universities who achieve the highest um, overall score in an entire section of the STARS report. So what you saw before is uh, credits. This is like an, a section of the report, which is a series of credits in the research category. Um, and so for the second year in a row, the STARS uh, 2020 AC Top Performer Award goes to the Division of Research. Um, they receive this award for earning 100% of the available points in the research section of our STARS report. And while this um, award does recognize the efforts of the entire TAMU research community, um, we have to you know, call out the Division of Research. They provided data um, that, helped us, um, able to, that helped us earn recognition in the STARS portal. And you can see this is a, a photo of Dr. Mark Barteau, um, the Vice President for Research. And we'd like to thank him and also Mr. Matt Fry for their um, help with um, collecting the STARS, STARS data. All right, so those are all of the uh, STARS awards for today. And now we wanna move into the next portion of our awards program. And I'm gonna pass it over to Kelly and Kelly, take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you, Ben. And once again, congratulations to all of those that Ben has recently acknowledged, whether you were helping with your department and, and earning those individual credits and slugging those out for us, or whether you are weren't, uh, earned bigger awards. Um, and I have to say it, it was 
it's been an interesting year living kind of behind a computer screen for the most part. And as you, you started to see, we, we were able to have some folks come in to actually receive their awards. And uh, it was an absolute delight to be able to visit with those folks. Uh, and I'm really honored to be able to move into the 2021 um, Texas A&M University Sustainability Champion Awards. And these recognize the outstanding contributions of students, faculty, and staff who create a campus culture of sustainability. And the Champion Awards recognize individuals who've uh, demonstrated exemplary effort, dedication, and leadership throughout the year in making Aggieland more environmentally, economically, and or socially sustainable. And this year, we've actually added the Team Award, which recognizes the critical role that teams play in advancing sustainability across campus. And so now I'm gonna uh, begin with the winners of our Team Award. And without further ado, the 2021 Team Sustainability Champion Award goes to the English, uh, two, two, the English 210 Open Educational Resources Education uh, Educational Resources Committee. That is a mouthful, and there are a lot of acronyms here, so I'm trying to say it all out. So the OER Committee, uh, which is Open Educational Resources. So the English 210 OER Committee was led by Dr. Claire Carly Miles and includes members Dr. Matt McKinney, Dr. Kalani Patterson, Dr. Nicole Hackstrom Schmidt, Dr. James Francis, Gia Alexander, Miss Kimberly Klo. And they're all affiliated with the English department, and as well as Dr. Kathy Anders and Sarah Lemire from University Libraries. English 210 is a large scale class with as many as 140 sections offered in a complete academic year, including summer. Um, technical and business writing teaches students the very practical lifelong skills such as writing a resume, business letters, and business reports. The OER committee identified freely available Creative Commons licensed technical writing textbooks that they could use as a foundation of a new textbook for English 210 and were able to produce a really high quality OER alternative for the class. And so with the commercial textbook, students may lose access to their textbook at the end of the semester because they sell it back to the bookstore for cash. Maybe their rental expired or they donated the book. And with an OER, students are able to maintain long-term access to resume templates, business letter examples, and other practical resources that they could use throughout their career. Thousands of students pay as much as $145 for a commercial textbook used in the class. And by developing this OER, the English 210 OER committee estimates saving Aggies up to $446,000 each academic year. So congratulations to the entire English 210 OER team, for their efforts to provide a cost-effective sustainable resource to our students. Next, the 2021 Sustainability Student Champion Award goes to Ms. Rian Murphy. Rian is a senior psychology major and serves as the VP of Marketing for the TAMU Green Team, where she works to educate fellow student athletes on everyday choices to reduce their carbon footprint. Throughout her two years on the green team, she worked closely with athletics to create awareness for fans on game days regarding how and where to recycle. She implemented a recycling program at the Texas A&M Equestrian Facility, and she worked with the athletic staff to implement recycling programs throughout many other sport facilities. Rian helped organize and run a recycling drive for athletics where they collected over 1,700 bottles, cans, and containers. And she's also secured reusable water bottles for the entire equestrian team. And as an intern for the organization, Players for the Planet, Rian collaborates with other student athletes as well as current and former professional athletes from all over the country to use our platform to make sun, uh, sustainability and environmental responsibility a fundamental value of sport. And through this role, she's expanded her reach and begun branching out to the entire Southeastern Conference. Congratulations to Ms. Rian Murphy on her Student Sustainability Champion Award. The 2021 Faculty Sustainability Champion Award goes to Dr. Marsha Montague from Educational Psychology. After attending a local town hall event in early August this summer, Dr. Montague recognized that pre-K through 12th grade students and parents were going to need support to make it through the COVID-19 shutdown while maintaining safety protocols. She immediately sought to address this challenge and seven weeks later officially launched the Aggie Homework Helpline. The AHH helpline was created to provide quality, free online tutoring to pre-K through 12th grade learners. And the program is powered by Aggie undergraduate students. During the fall semester, Dr. Montague organized more than 117 student volunteers and interns each week to assist with families in need. And during that time, the AHH impacted 344 families, 
and clocked over 1,000 contact hours with interactions of an additional 2,000 families across Texas. Dr. Marsha Montague's spirit of service, justice, and inclusion for economically and socially disadvantaged Texans earned her the Faculty Sustainability Champion Award. Congratulations. And finally, the 2021 Sustainability Champion for Staff Award goes to Ms. Jeannie Prestwood from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Jeannie Prestwood has a passion for protecting the environment and has been an ardent promoter of reuse and recycling in all arenas of her daily life. She's been the driving force behind waste and recycling efforts within electrical and computer engineering, affecting faculty, staff, and graduate students who have offices in Weisenbaker Building. Within engineering, Ms. Presswood has been a key contributor to the Trex Plastic Challenge. Trex recycles plastic films such as bubble wrap, Ziploc bags, and grocery bags, and converts them into eco-friendly decking. Her efforts to collect recycling also extend beyond work and home, and these include things like the American Legion Auxiliary, doing recycling from her church, and even collecting discarded recyclables while she's out during walks or even in parking lots. Ms. Presswood's commitment to service through recycling is certainly exemplary. And congratulations to Ms. Dreeny Presswood on her Staff Champion Award. I'd like to take a moment once again to recognize our 2021 team, student, faculty, and staff, Texas A&M University Sustainability Champions, Let's give them a virtual round of applause. We, ce <laughs> we celebrate our champions today and want to remind each of you that we individually have an impact on campus and our community. And so to share more about the positive impacts, I wanna now turn it over to my colleague, Jesse Carswell. Thank you, Kelly, and good morning, everyone. Uh, so this morning we have discussed what the university is doing to move towards a more sustainable future. It will take collaboration to create change, but as we've seen with our champions this year, individuals can also make a difference. We wanna highlight two programs that the Office of Sustainability oversees to show just how easy it is to create change as an individual and let you know some of our upcoming events. The first is the Aggie Green Fund. This is a grant-making organization on campus that uses student fees to fund environmentally sustainable projects. We do this in two ways, through major grants and micro grants. Major grants are projects that cost over $3,500 and or will take longer than six months to complete, while micro grants are projects that cost less than $3,500 and will be completed within six months. Since 2011, we've been able to award over $2.1 million in grant money. This year, we were able to fund over $139,000 for major grants and over $7,500 in micro grants. We're excited to see how these projects turn out, but we also wanna highlight a few projects that persevered in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and were able to complete their projects. So first we have the micro grants and this is the water bottle filling station project by Deborah Almond through the Becky Gates Children's Center. We have Gladson e-waste project by Christiana Bowles through the Residence Life Department. Fill it forward by Christiana Bowles through the Residence Life Department. Howdy Farm solar panel batteries by Amanda Gambiana, a horticulture undergraduate student. Rocket Books by Jason Viler through the Scholarship and Financial Aid Department. Going Paperless for a Fit Planet by Anna Taggart through Recreation Sports. And then our major grant that was able to be completed this year is the Outdoor Hydration Stations by Christiana Ball through Residence Life. Congratulations to all of these project teams that made a large impact on the sustainability of our campus during such a challenging time. Another project we wanna highlight with a short video is the Texas A&M Urban Farm United. Howdy, I'm Jesse Carswell with the Office of Sustainability and I oversee the Aggie Green Fund. The Aggie Green Fund is a grant-making organization on campus that supplies funds from student fees to environmentally sustainable projects. Uh, since 2011, we funded over $2.1 million in sustainable projects. And one of our biggest success stories is the Texas A&M Urban Farm United. Since 2019, they've received over $74,000 in grants. So let's go to Lizette Templin, who is the person responsible for this whole project. The motivation was I had such an, um, a successful residential experience with growing these towers and I thought well if I can do this because I have such a brown thumb anybody can do this. So our name is Tamu Urban Farm United and the emphasis is on the United. So right off the bat the major uh, source that uh, benefit is the 12th pan, the food pantry. 
Um, we're looking to also serve the Veterans Meals for Veterans program. That's coming up with the addition of six more towers. Um, we are starting the entrepreneurial project where we are now supplying Nam Cafe and um, also we're delivering spinach to another restaurant. We are able to grow up to 150 crops, uh, but we are learning that um, the sweet spots of every microclimate and, um, and usage, um, community's usage, determines what we are growing successfully. And lettuce is very, very successful for us. Uh, spinach, kale, so anything that's in the greens family is very successful. It has not impacted us at all, and that is the testament to the technology. Nothing should impact the people's ability to get fresh food. This is my happy place. Um, you're ensconced with these beautiful plants, these fabulous people, everybody volunteer, really looking to try to make a difference in our food source, um, a difference in, in, in nutrition and the value that we get. And it's a great learning experience. <laughs>thank you to the two food team and the volunteers for their hard work. This was just a snapshot of all the work that they do. So I encourage you to view the entire video and the, or the entire interview and the full video on our YouTube channel. <coughs> so today's event is the first event of our virtual Earth Month celebration, which runs until April 23rd. Uh, like Ben mentioned, our theme is creating change through the sustainable development goals. We have events happening every day for the next two weeks that explore different areas of this topic and each one has at least one opportunity to receive an entry into our drawing with more if you watch live. Each code word is an entry, so be sure to collect as many code words as you can throughout all of our events and then submit them to us at sustainability at tmu.edu when you're done. The grand prize winner can receive a Nintendo Switch or any of the runner-up prizes that they prefer, and the two runner-up winners can choose between certain Yeti coolers, fitness watches, wireless headphones, or a GoPro Hero 7. And just in case that isn't enough, this year, we're also partnering with Maroon Base, so not only can you collect code words to enter into our giveaway, but you can earn points through the Maroon Base app to win cash prizes. So your first code word is champions. So make sure you write that down and look in the chat because we're gonna drop more code words for this event for those of you tuning in live so you have more chances to win. And our keynote speaker this year will be Shelby Orm, Aggie class of 2015 and a former intern with the Office of Sustainability. She received her Bachelor's of Science in Environmental Studies and has been living a zero waste lifestyle for the last five years. Ms. Orm is an environmental activist, educator, and social media influencer with over 300,000 followers. She'll be joining us on April 22nd at 11 a.m. to discuss how to create change as an individual. For a complete list of virtual Earth Month activities, please visit sustainability.tmu.edu. Another entry or another opportunity to gain entry into the giveaway and the second program to create change as an individual that everyone can participate in is the Aggie Sustainability Alliance or ASA for short. The ASA, which is open to all faculty, staff and students engages participants in fostering a campus culture of sustainability. Individuals, offices and soon student organizations can be recognized for their voluntary contributions in five areas. The first is sustainable energy and water use. Then we have transportation, food and purchasing, waste minimization, and social sustainability. During our relaunch for the spring 2021 semester, we saw over 200 faculty and staff members individually certify by committing to sustainable habits. We would love to see this number keep growing. So this is our call to action for those attending this event. Whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording later on, know that an individual can have a large impact and small actions do add up. Please consider taking the ASA checklist and committing to sustainability. And if you already have certified, please, re please refer someone else to the checklist. As we conclude our ceremony today, I would like to invite everyone to our next presentation tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, it is the cost and burden of environmental justice by two of our student sustainability interns, Catherine Roses and Renee Oswald. I would like to also thank our champion winners, our STARS Award recipients, and all campus partners who contribute to making Texas A&M more sustainable. 
We would like to extend our appreciation to each of you for supporting our award winners and for attending today. At Texas A&M, we are fearless on every front and together we can address our global sustainability challenges. If you have questions, we will stick around for a while to answer them live or you can contact our office and please also stay connected to us through social media. Thank you, happy Earth Month and gigum. Morning, Jeannie.